Hi, I'm Dan Foreman, CEO at Copper Labs. We help utilities take control of energy and water demand by engaging consumers with real-time meter data. So we do this with wireless devices that unlock the existing data that these meters are already transmitting, whether it's gas, water, or electric, uh, with or without smart meters. So this helps to uh, create load flexibility, also can help modernize grids more effectively. Yeah, last year was the first time we attended ETS, and I attend a lot of utility conferences, as you might imagine, and it struck me and my team that it was a different group and a different type of conversation happening here. Um, you know, we always like to make sure that there are sufficiently senior leaders at these conferences, but it's not just the, the, the people. The kind of conversation has been different, and if you look at the agenda, it's really the, the, the one, two, three of all the top issues facing this industry around decarbonization, managing change, resiliency, and so... Uh, I think it's the right people having the right conversations at a pretty critical time. I'd like them to imagine a different future than, than drawing a straight line from the past from which we're, we're coming. We've got a problem set facing utilities that's growing much faster than the solutions that they have available, and so I think it's time that we think differently. And if you look at the affordability crisis that we're in, we can't solve all the problems spending the same way that we've been spending. So we have to find ways to unlock new value from the existing infrastructure, assets, and programs that we have so that we can solve all these new problems coming down the line. We have more outages than any developed country in the world, and we're talking about you know, an increasingly decarbonized grid, resiliency, safety. All these things are coming into play that were not such pressing issues uh, in the last decade. I think it's been a mix of thinking about not just the utilities operations, but how it affects the customer and having that holistic view of, you know, if we make these moves to solve these necessary problems on the grid, how does it affect affordability? How does it affect customer care? And a lot of times it's easy to just think about the siloed problem that you might be experiencing around electrification, for example. But if you don't think about how you bring the consumer along, you're going to have limited success with that program. And so I'm happy to hear that mixed dialogue here. Yeah, we're helping utilities modernize legacy grids for a fraction of the time and cost of what a net new metering deployment might look like. And so we've spent billions collectively on advanced meters over the last 20 years, whether they be AMR drive-by, AMI 1.0, and increasingly AMI 2.0, we haven't always gotten the return that we wanted, and so Copper uniquely wirelessly unlocks the data that's already in those meters, encrypted or otherwise, in a way that we can create more flexible grid modernization. So just like agile software development did to waterfall software development, where we had these big bang projects where you'd bet two years and a lot of money that you're going to get it right, transforming grids in this way can allow utilities to do smaller bets, use mixed metering environments with mixed vintages, meter types, and meter vendors, and instead of going down a long road and saying, you know what, I need something new, I'm going to rip and replace it all with a single vendor, wait five years to see how that goes, we can drive more competition, more interoperability, and free up billions to go solve some of these new problems that we've talked about. I feel like we're running out of time, and you know, especially where we live in, in Boulder, it's the, the summers have gotten hotter. Uh, we are running out of water, and so again, you know, Copper works with gas, water, and electric utilities, uh, and in particular, if you think about beneficial electrification, we'd all love to flip a switch, turn off gas, and electrify everything. But if you're in Mountain West like we are in the Northeast, you can't do that. It would create a net new unsustainable peak on the electric grid in the winter, and so. If you can have a dual fuel visibility, a way to harmonize gas and electric, you can make more informed decisions along the way, and we're giving utilities that uniquely integrated view. I think, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I said this in a podcast recently, so it's sort of re rerunning it, but I look at my background a lot like our political divide right now. I, you know, I've been in Boulder, Colorado, one of the most liberal cities in the country half my life, grew up in West Virginia, clearly one of the most conservatives, and I maintain text threads with my friends there, um, and they're very different than the text threads with my friends in Boulder, and I think that we've got the same challenge politically as we do with the grid, where you know, people aren't looking for their way to the middle. It's either, you know, we're going to go all in on, you know, gas is the only way forward, or we're going to go all in on renewables the only way forward. And the answer is always in the middle. And 
grown up the way that I did in that area and then living the way I have for the past 25 years, it's taught me that the answer is in the middle. And to the extent that we keep going to each other's sides and, and you're either right or you're wrong, we are not going to solve the energy crisis.